thing in and you get one, you get one thing out, right? And if you get that specific, then we are uh, saying exactly what function it is. Okay. So you put something in and you get something out. That's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to put something in, get something out. Uh, I'm going to do it again. And I'll have two points then. And I'll have two input outputs. And I can graph this graph. All right. And then we'll find out that maybe there's a better way, an easier way. I'm going to put one in there, because why not? Three times one plus four times y equals 12. Uh, three times one is three plus four y. 12 four y equals nine, and y equals nine fourths. Okay. Now I have to graph that. this work. And I'm gonna put in I'm gonna put in zero for x. Three times zero plus four times y equals twelve. Four y equals twelve because this time zero is nothing. Y equals three. Two points. Now that one turns out a little better, right? I don't have a fraction, so it's easier. Um, I'm gonna make room graph. All right, so first I have to graph 1 comma 9 fourths. Okay, how am I going to get to 9 fourths? Let's go up to 1. How many fourths is 1? What? How many fourths makes up 1? Four, four, one, two, three, four fourths, five, six, seven, eight fourths, nine fourths, two and one fourth. Two would be eight fourths, one more fourth would be nine fourths, two and one fourth. Okay, so there's a point. I also have a point at zero, three. And I know that this graph is going to be what shape? We said a line. Y, is it going to be a line? Yeah. X and Y are both to the first power, so we know it's going to be a line. And so if it's going to be a line, I can just go ahead and connect those two points into a very beautiful straight line. Okay. Would someone like to come and show us a different way? Maybe an easier, more traditional way of graphing? is positive or negative? Positive. positive. We haven't done anything to change that. So 12 is still positive. Whatever we did. Whatever order we choose, right? So 12 minus 3x or negative 3x plus 12. Grab your line in the same place, on the, on the same plane, but in a different color. Yeah, 
address that in my future. Our two graphs, they don't quite look right. Now, why, why don't they look the same? Should they look the same? Who thinks they should look the same? Raise your hand. You think that the two graphs should look the same? This, if we graph this one, we graph that one, should look the same. Who thinks that it's okay that they look different? Okay. Who thinks that they look the same? Okay, so a few people think it should be the same, and a few people, a few things, people think that it's okay that they're different. Okay. Now, they should look the same. They should be the same graph. Right. So what's your explanation for why they don't look the same? They don't look the same. They were graphed differently. I used two different points that Sarah used, right? So I used this point and that point, and my line doesn't wind up going through this point that Sarah used. Right? Why is that? Why doesn't my line go through her other point as it should? should look exactly the same. They should be right on top of each other. Right. That's an important question. I should go back and fix my line. Uh, make sure I could do by deleting line. Should go. Should go through this point. And look at this. Does Sarah's go through the point that I plotted? Oh, it's like a nodding or a shaking of the head situation. Yes, it goes through my point that I drew, and mine should go through her point as well, because whether it looks like this, or we do the same thing to both sides, right, through de several different steps of doing the same thing to both sides, this equation and this equation will have all the same solutions. If they have all the same solutions, then they should definitely have the same graph, because the graph is all the solutions infinite number of points, and if you graphed all these infinite number of points, they would, they would be so close together that they would start to look like a line. And if you graphed all the solutions, an infinite number of solutions, they would make a line. They would all like overlap on each other's, kind of, sort of, you can imagine that, you kind of meld together into that line. Okay. Um, As part of the homework, I asked you to go back, take this point, and make sure that it's supposed to be on the line. Make sure it's supposed to be on the line. How can we make sure this point, what, what is this point, by the way, right here? Where are the coordinates of this point? Four zero. Four zero. 
x is 4, y is 0. It doesn't go up or down. It stays right there at y equals 0, so 4, 0. How can we make sure that that is supposed to be on the line? That point is supposed to be on the line. What? x and y should be 4 and 0. So we can go uh, to, we can plug them in here. We can plug them in here. We can plug them in here. They better all be the same. If, if, they, if this equation doesn't have all the same solutions as this equation, then Sarah did something wrong. But she did. She did it all right. Uh, so let's put 0 in for y. 0 equals 3. 3 fourths times 4 for x. 0 equals 3. So 3 fourths times 4. I like to write it 4 over 1 so that I am sure that it can line up the way it should. 4 cancels with 4. We're left with a 3. That's 0. 0 is equal to 0. Last time I checked. So yes, that point should be on the line. Which means that Sarah got y by itself correctly, put the correct y-intercept, and followed this, this negative slope correctly as well. Down 3 inches. What's a common mistake we talked about when we have negative slopes? So somebody might go and put a point at 3, at y equals 3. And a lot of times when they have a negative slope, what's the common mistake that we pointed out last time that, that students might do sometimes when trying to follow a negative slope? Negative, it's negative 3 fourths. So how might they mistakenly map out that? Down from here, yeah. they could go down, and then what would they do that would be a mistake? Down three. Go right. Well, if we go to the right four, we find the point that we just tested and found it should be on the line. So what would be the wrong thing to do? Go to the left. So if we go to the left four, that's a really common mistake because they think it's negative slope. So do everything negative. Negative three, negative four. But if you do two things that are negative, you wind up making a positive. Negative divided by negative is positive. And then you plot this. This line here, you graph this line and you find, well, how will you know that that's incorrect? Do you think you followed the slope correctly? Do you think you have the y-intercept correct? How can you test and see if this line is correct as it goes to these two points? Don't give up on me now. How can you test and make sure that these two points should be on the line? Coordinates for x and y, plug them in for x and y in the equation. Okay? So if we go to plug in, you know, we think that this is the line, we plug in negative 4 and 0, negative 4 for x and 0 for y, then we'll get 0 for y, 3 minus 3 fourths times negative 4, so put negative 4 over 1, make it easy, 0 equals 3, the fourths cancel, we get negative 3 times negative 1. Positive 3 and we get 6 equals 0. That's not good. That's not true. Okay? So we know we did something wrong. And obviously since I planned it out, the thing that we did wrong was to go down 3 and to the left 4 when we should go down 3 to the right 4. Or we should go up 3 and then we can go to the left 4. If we go up 3, that's positive 3, negative 4, negative 4, positive 3 or negative 4 would be a negative 3 fourths slope. Getting y by itself is definitely a skill that we want to have. We don't want to do what I did forever. We just plug in something for x and then solve for y. We get y by itself. It's a skill we want to master and be able to recreate time after time after time. Because not only are we going to want to get y by itself in this kind of a situation, we're also going to have equations that have several different variables, three, maybe four, it doesn't matter. It could be a limitless number of variables. I and mean, we just want to get one of them by itself. We might have an x and a y and a z and be able to just get x by itself. And y and z on the other side. Okay? This is the beginning, the baby steps of getting there, that place. Being able to isolate any variable we want. Right? Any questions about that or questions about the homework at all? Just give me a head check. Don't have questions or ask questions. Okay. Um, I'm going to come around, just have your homework down, I'm going to check it out real quick.